In today's video, we're going to be exploring using the cumulative distribution function in Python through a few different examples. Our first one is going to be a manual calculation. Then examples two through four are going to utilize NumPy, and we're going to take a look at a few different data points with that. And finally, to round out this video, we're going to be taking a look at plotting the CDF with the help of matplotlib and Seaborn. But before we do get coding in Python, I want to go over a little bit more information about the cumulative distribution function. Okay, so let's take a look at some information on the cumulative distribution function, also known as CDF. So what it tells you is the probability of a random variable X will take a value less than or equal to a particular value of X. So let's look at this graph. I think this is probably the easiest way to explain it. So let's say you're trying to find a value that's going to be less than one, right? And we go over here to one and we go all the way up. So you can see it's a little bit above 0 0.8, right? So this tells us we have essentially, let's say this is 82 or 83%, right? So we have an 83% probability that the value in this distribution is going to be less than one. Now, this could be negative three, negative two, negative one. It doesn't matter, right? 83% chance that the value is going to be one or less, right? Let's take a look at zero. Now, zero is probably a little bit less than 0 0.5. It gets really, really close, but it's not exactly there, right? So if we want to look at zero, let's say this is like 48, 0 0.48, right? So, that, so to find a value that's going to be zero or less, we have essentially a 48% probability. Now, the range on the CDF is zero to one. To convert it to percent, right, we just multiply it by 100. And here is the formula over here. So what we can do with our CDF. So I showed you what we can find for at X or below, right? We just use a CDF. We can also find a range of values, right? Example, negative one to one. So if we wanted to find the values, right, from negative one to one, all we would have to do is take our value at one, right? Which gives us this number over here and subtract our value from negative one, right? Which gives us this value over here. And that would give us that inner range. We could also find the opposite, right? We can find at X or higher. So let's say, for example, we wanted to find a value that is one or greater. Well, if we look at one, it gives us all the information from one backwards. So how we do that is we would just take one minus this information and it would give us all this data over here. So let's take a look at a um, pretty basic example over here. Let's take a look at the CDF calculation. Let's say our data points are two, three, three, five, and seven. Now, granted the data sets you're gonna work with have a lot more data points, but since I wanted to make a basic example, let's go over here. So if we wanna take a look at two, right? We have one out of five data points being two or below. So we have a 0 0.2. We look at three, right? We have two threes over here. So 60% probability that two data points are at three or lower, right? So we hit two, three, and three, which is three out of five. Now, if you look at the five over here, right? Four data points are at five or less. So our CDF is 0 0.8. And if we look at our last number, which is seven, well, every single data point is at seven or lower. So that's why we have a one, which is 100% probability. And this over here for the data that it's gonna be less than one. So I'm gonna actually show you how we can code this manually in Python, this first section over here. And then I'm gonna show you a bunch of different shortcuts, which I recommend using in the future. So, okay, let's uh, start coding. Let's start off by importing everything we'll need in this video. So import numpy as and p from scipy.stats import norm. Then we're gonna import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, and then import seaborn as sns. And I think that should be everything. And uh, let's look at example one, which is gonna be our manual calculation. So, Example one, manual calc. And essentially what this is going to be is essentially what I showed you on that last slide. So if you don't want to do the manual calc, skip ahead. 
Otherwise, I just want to show you a little bit of the math behind it. So what we're going to do is data equals, and we're going to do, make a list. We're just going to pass in our list over here, two, three, three, five, and seven. Now, what you'll recognize is this is ordered, right? That's not going to always be the case with rural data. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to set sorted data and I'm just going to use NumPy sort. So np.sort and then pass in our data over here. Well, there's a lot of different ways that you could order a list, but I'm just gonna use NumPy. Then what we need to do is find the data length. So data length equals length. And then we just pass in our sorted data. So just pass that in over here. Okay, awesome. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna have CDF values and this is gonna be an empty list. So just make this over here. And then we should be good to go. Awesome. So what we're gonna say is for I in range and we're gonna pass in our length, right? Then we're gonna have over here, we're gonna say our CDF value. So CDF value equals np.sum. And we're gonna look at sorted data less than or equal to sorted data. And I'm gonna zoom, not zoom up, but scroll up a little bit. And we're gonna look at this I data points, and then we're gonna divide it by the length of the data. So data length. So what this is gonna do, it's gonna look through every number in here, right? It's gonna start off with two, is two less than over here? Well, there's only one of these. So one divided by five. Then we're gonna look at three, right? Three is less, okay, awesome. And then it's gonna look at this next one. Three, is that also less? Yeah, so we know three now is gonna be over here, three out of five, then it's gonna look at five. Well, there's four now uh, that are five or less. So then you have that value, then seven is gonna be everything, okay. And uh, lastly, we're just going to append these values into the CDF values over here. So CDF values dot append, and then just pass in your CDF value. All right, and then we'll just print this out. So print and print out our CDF values. And you can see 0 0.2, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1.0. So again, right, grab our list sort the list, find the length of our list, create an empty list for our new CDF values, then you can technically do that manually, but uh, like I showed you in those slides, or you can just create a for loop, which I recommend building out this for loop, find the value, right? We're doing a sum over here, we're taking a look at the sorted data, and we're looking at this i over here, which is i in range, right? So each value for this sorted list, and then you divide that by the data length. Okay, hopefully that makes a little bit of sense for you guys. And the rest is gonna be much easier. So what we're gonna do is look at example two. So we're gonna say example two CDF at a single point. Now, before we jump into there, I do wanna generate some data. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna set up a NumPy random seed. So we'll say random dot seed and just copy what I want if you have the same exact results. I'm just gonna put a random seed of 12 in here. And uh, let's set our mean median mode. We'll say mean equals zero. Then we'll set standard deviation equal to one. And then we'll say size equals 1000. And have that, awesome. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create data. So we're gonna say data equals np.random.normal. And then location around the mean. Man, that was some terrible spelling. Okay, then scale equals our standard deviation. And then our size equals size, equals size. Feel free to change this if you want or follow with the tutorial. And now we can actually take a look at our example two. I'm just gonna say example two through four prep over here. And then uh, prep. And then we're gonna look at our example two. So example two, CDF at a single point. Awesome. So let me create a few new cells. And let's say we wanted to take a look at the CDF at the value of negative one. So we'll say CDF negative one. We're gonna say this is equal to norm.cdf. Then first pass in your value, so negative one. And then pass in your location. So location equals data dot mean. 
Now this won't be the same mean as we had above, right? Because this is random data, it's gonna be pretty close though. And then next we need to set our scale, which is our standard deviation. So scale equals data.std. And uh, now we're gonna have our CDF negative one and we can print this out. So print it, so print and CDF of negative one. 0.167, so 16.7% of the values are gonna be at negative one or lower. Now let's take a look at example three, which is CDF as a range. So CDF range, and how we do this one, and I'm gonna create a few new cells as well, is we need to have an upper and lower bound CDF. So I'm gonna say upper CDF, and then I'll have lower CDF like that. And we're gonna have this over here. Now, I'm gonna look at two to a negative two. So I'll say, uh, well, I should say negative two to two. So our upper is gonna be two, our lower is gonna be there. I'm just gonna literally copy our code because it's gonna be the same, right? Except we're changing that first number. So upper, let's make sure we have that as two. Lower is gonna be a negative two. We'll run this cell over here. And then to find a range, uh, we'll just have to subtract these out. But just to show you what these look like first, print, Let's look what our upper CDF is, 0.97. Then if I go over here and just grab our lower CDF, right? We have 0.02. So we'll put over here CDF range equals, and we'll just take this upper CDF minus our lower. And between two and negative two, how many of the values? I mean, you could just do some mental math right over there. Uh, but about 95% of the values range between negative two and two. Awesome. And uh, let's take a look at example four. So with the CDF, right, I showed you that graph, we can get everything from a certain point or lower. What if we want to do the opposite? If we wanted to grab everything that was higher than that certain point, well, you kind of reverse it, right? So example four, we're going to say CDF of the right side and we'll say value greater than two. So all that we have to do is we'll say value greater than two equals, and we'll take one minus, and we'll do the norm CDF of two, which we actually already did that, right? So this is gonna be everything that is greater than two, and we can just print that out, so prints, And you can see 0 0.0249 gives us that right side. So anytime you want anything right of a specific point or anything greater than the certain point by using CDF, do one minus. Now, to close out this Python side of things, let's take a look at a graph. So we'll say example five graph. And I like using matplotlib and Seaborn. So we'll just say Seaborn over here because that's really what it's based around. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an ECDF plot. So SNS.ECDF plot, pass in our data, and then we'll say label equals our CDF like that. And it's ECDF, ECDF, awesome. And then PLT.title, CDF. And we'll say, well, let's say CDF normal distribution. This is what we have normal distribution. That also lines up with the notes that I have. Uh, we'll say plt.xlabel and we'll pass in data values. Then we can do our y label, which is cumulative probability. Is that a y? Then plt.legend, and you don't have to copy exactly what I have over here. Build that grid, and we'll say it's true. And lastly, plt. Check. And check this out. This is pretty close to the graph that we generated in, uh, or not we generated, but I showed you in the slides. I believe I actually did use this on the slide side of things, but we have negative four to four and you can take a look at values, right? You wanna look at the value at negative one or less, right? It's slightly less than 0 
when we go above, right, we can see it's 0 0.167, so that lines up. And uh, we generated with that just a few lines of code. We don't need to specifically label everything, although I recommend that. But uh, yeah, so again, just to reiterate what was covered in this video, you can do a manual calc. I don't really recommend it, but I just wanted to show you, you know, kind of the code behind it. You can literally build this out in a few lines of code. All I have to do is go down over here, norm.cdf. You put the value in here, you put the location of the mean, then you put your scale associated with it, and you can find that CDF value. If you want to find the range, take your upper minus your lower bound, again, a few lines of code. And then if you want to find the, the value greater than uh, with that CDF, all you do is one minus, and you can graph your CDF right here in Seaborn with just a few lines of code. Hope you guys enjoyed this video on the CDF. If you did enjoy it and learned something new, make sure to subscribe to the channel. It's 100% for free, and it helps me achieve my goal of hitting 100,000 subscribers in 2025. And the only way I do that is by uploading at least three videos every single week on this channel focused around data science, and that's what I'm doing. Super motivated towards it. Now, if you want to learn even more about statistics within data science, I have a few videos linked down below in the description, and I should have a playlist soon right over here.